Oh, I love that sound. And that's right. It's episode 47. 47 of these of Rule of Two. I'm your host, Mark Riley. Darth Rylis, as I'm known. Perry Nemiroff <laughs> is here, sitting with me right now. How am I here? Uh, you are here, and I love it. Thank you for joining me on the, the in clutch, because Mark Fernandez has some business to attend to, and so we were like, well, who do we get? The Grand Moff Nemiroff, coming in hot for Rule of Two. How are you? I am doing pretty well. Good. I'm yeah. excited to see what happens, because I'm completely unprepared. That's <laughs> See, and that's the prerequisite for Rule of Two. We just go in. We're just going to talk some Star Wars. We do have some stuff. We do have a little bit of news that we're going to talk about. We're going to get into some things about, like, speculation, and then we're going to go down the rabbit hole. We're going to talk about the Big Mac. You know what the Big Mac is, Perry? The Big Mac in the Star Wars universe is the Force. It's the Jedi. It's the Sith. It's the light versus dark. It's the bad guys versus the good guys, and they use the Force, and they have lightsabers, and we like the Big Mac. That's what we say here at Rule of Two. We have a Rule of Two army. They're here now live. We see you here in the chat. Thank you for joining us. We'll get more people in here, and uh, towards the end of the show, we'll go to your live chat questions, and we can just have fun. Because that's what I want to do. I like fun. Okay. So let me ask you this real quick. Okay. I'm going to start with a rumor because I like this rumor because I want this rumor to be true. We talked about it a little bit on Collider Live, but I, I do not think it's legitimate until I heard Christian say, well, I heard something too. Would you want to see a Darth Bane TV series on Disney Plus? Yes, I would. Yes, I would too. Yes, I would. Out there in the chat, would you want to see... Darth Bane. Now, here's the thing. We've talked about this a lot. Star Wars is pretty universal. You say Star Wars and you go, well, yeah, I know Star Wars. When you say Darth Bane, does the average person that's not as sweaty like us know that? What is your take on that? I would imagine no, except for the signifier Darth. Darth, exactly. Because immediately when you hear that, you do think dark sinister something along those lines and we haven't really seen any star wars property embrace the darkness quite like what i picture they could do with a series about him have you read the book the drew carpetian books you I would love those. I know the they're funny, not canon, but the funny thing is, I have some of them downloaded, and I just never got around to them because we kept getting newer books that we were right. reviewing. So I kept getting sidetracked with those books. But hey, you know I'm running a lot, and that means a lot of audiobook time right now. You would love this, especially it's it's basically the whole setup of how the Sith come mm-hmm. to the rule of two, which Very is the name speed. It is your speed, and it's it's great. It's it's like it takes place, you know, the Sith army is in full force, and it's like all about the ranks in there and how Darth Bane basically realizes, you know, if we're going to defeat the Jedi, I'm going to have to kill all you MFers, bring on an apprentice, and do it that way in the shadows, and it, and it births the Sith legend that we have now. Now, this report, um, it says that they're looking at Dave Bautista for Darth Bane. <laughs> And it's very obvious, but I'll say good. I'm still not buying it, but I'm not buying the legitimacy yet of the Mm -hmm. report until I hear other outlets come to it. But it does sound good and it does sound ripe for a Disney Plus series. I like that idea. I think there's loads of potential there. Mm-hmm. I would be really excited to see Dave Batista show up more of his range because yeah. I think he's delivered great performances thus far, but I think he can do so much more than we've seen already. Yeah. The idea of something like this being on Disney Plus would be a little surprising to me because I do feel like because of the image Disney wants for Disney Plus, like right. they have for their entire brand, we're going to see stuff that has to have the light in it. And I wouldn't want to see that series unless it went full dark that's i'm totally with you now here's what i'm wondering i think that's a great point if they were to do and they are doing the mandalorian though when i hear mandalorian there's shades of darkness there well my my opinion on all this might change when we see that show right because we don't really know what they i mean we know lightly based on what we saw at star wars celebration but we don't really know what the tone and the style of the show is and in my mind i keep thinking to myself that show has the potential to be the next Game of Thrones, especially if yeah. they run with a weekly release format. What is it, two episodes they're dropping right out the gate? I Something think so, like yeah, that. two episodes right out the gate. But and then, then if they do weekly, I mean, we need event programming. I love binge-watching as much as the next person, but right. I need that kind of Game of Thrones void filled in my life. I'm totally with you because when you don't have – when you can't just binge the entire thing and you have to wait weekly, that's – becomes the water cooler mm-hmm. talk. Then you're going, did you see? Did you see what happened? You see the Red Wedding? Did you see whatever episode's going to get the Mandalorian in us talking? 
I'm with you on that. This is what I'm thinking, though. Mandalorian comes out, huge success, hopefully. Okay. Because it looks great. I'm, I'm very excited. We're getting Cassie and Andor. Maybe an Obi-Wan series. That's enough of the light side stuff that maybe if the, all of these things work and this report ultimately ends up to be true, I don't doubt that they're talking about all their different yeah. properties that might work. And maybe they go, you know what? We're going to go now dark. We're going to go bring the Sith to the forefront. I think it could work if an Obi-Wan series came before that. I think maybe. that would make a nice bookend maybe. We've got a lot of time before that so happens. I mean, I've learned my lesson with getting super hyped, even when certain reports come from the trades right now. And usually when I see a report online from the trades, I think that is as close to an official confirmation as we're possibly getting. But Absolutely. with the Star Wars franchise, film and now TV included, we've just seen so many things come and go. Ideas that we thought were sure things that were going to happen, and then all right. of a sudden it's shut down. So until they kind of find their footing and I get a clear, concrete idea of what their plan is going forward, yep. I'm not going to get too far ahead of myself, but I do have a lot of faith. Yeah, I'm with you on that. We're just going to put a pin on that one because no news right now. It does. I, I totally agree with you, Perry. I think we might need to see how it shapes up with the Disney Plus, see how the Mandalorian does, see if we're going to get some light side stuff because it is Disney Plus. They do have Loki coming, though, but Loki's, yeah, he's a little bit of a nicer he's bad playful. guy. He's playful. He's a playful bad guy. So I like this idea. TBD, if more news breaks, we will definitely talk about it here on Rule of Two, but let's get into it. The meat of the episode, episode 47 of Rule of Two. Who's doing it? I am. You're doing Rise. it. Rise. Not as good as Fernandez, and he's missing for sure on this one. It's episode 47. You heard Perry Nemiroff up top. She is joining me, filling in for Mark Fernandez. You are getting this here live on Collider Video's main YouTube channel, dropping every Monday at 5 o'clock. And then please subscribe. Share this with your friends. The Podcast One Jedi Council feed, you'll hear us there as well. So great to have you, and so great to have you, Miss Perry Nemiroff. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, except you're witnessing me in my... This is actually my Creed VR outfit, because oh, yeah. I played the other week, and I was schwitzing so much, and I'm like, I can't do that again. So I legit went home and changed, because <laughs> I thought I was done with my on-camera duties, yeah. so I was wearing to sweat playing Creed. <laughs> right, and you walked into a text, and you're like, huh? I have no what jewelry am I to... on or anything. Well, I'm wearing... I'm representing the Star Wars, and on that note, we do want to give a big shout out we had some friends here who sent us a lot of good stuff and it is our friends at 66 inc ok.com or 66 inc it's this great shirt i'm wearing right now a lot of star wars material a lot of star wars mashups i have myself some little ig88 I have a Wampa Patrol one that I that I grabbed. That's I think that's what I was wearing earlier today Is before I went home and changed. But I really want to thank you for sending that out, doing a big shout out on the show, and then my personal favorite. Mm -hmm. This is cool. If you can see it, I got my own coaster oh, I out of wood. In. Darth Rylus, Rule of Two, a bunch of Star Wars uh, logos and everything. It is so cool. I've been resting my water on it all day. <laughs> really appreciate you guys sending that out. And uh, check it out if you like really good Star Wars shirts, 66inkok.com. The number's 66inkok.com. There it is. So welcome to the show. Thanks, everybody, for joining us, and especially you, Perry. Thanks for doing this on such last minute. Thank you for the warm welcome. So let's get into the meat of this, because whenever Daisy Ridley opens her mouth, there's Star Wars mm -hmm. talk. And she was doing just that. So she basically just told uh, USA Today that at the by the com end of The Rise of Skywalker, we will know the complete story behind Ray's parents. Hmm. Here we go again. Yeah. When, yeah. <laughs> Is it bad that I've kind of grown tired of this I, conversation? I have, too. <laughs> I have, too. And I see a lot of you in the chat, too. And I've seen some tweets. And, um, you know... One, let's let's look at the uh, the elephant in the room and the idea of retconning mm -hmm. and um, some of the, you know, divisive nature with Ryan Johnson's The Last Jedi. I'm not getting into that. Mm -hmm. I don't care anymore. I love that movie. I'm going to always love that movie. Nobody I'm right can change. there with you. And when I think retcon, thankfully, there is an out, in my opinion, with The Last Jedi. Kylo Ren could have been lying to Daisy Ridley. Classic Sith move. Mm -hmm. He's lying. He's trying to get her to join him. But I can also think that maybe they were filthy junk traders mm -hmm. and they adopted her somehow 
and her real parents are somebody. There's a lot of possibilities. Perry, yeah, I know. These are the problems with terms like retcon because I feel like, and this is nobody's fault out there, I just feel like the industry has kind of shaped that word into yeah. a negative thing where, oh, oh yeah. like retcon to erase the bad thing, there is the possibility that they do that to enhance the story. Like, let's say they do retcon it, so to speak, and they change what Kylo said because he was trying to manipulate her. He was right. lying to her for a very specific reason that we first they're exploring episode nine that winds up enhancing his character. That's not retconning that some because something doesn't work. That's right. building another character through that decision. Yeah, that's that's story. That's character. That's yeah, and I can see it working. I don't like the idea that you know just because JJ is coming back means X Y Z for Ryan Johnson. Now she also went off and said that um, they asked, her, "Are you going to be part of Star Wars in the near future? Are you part of the new trilogy?" And she kind of stumbled over the words a bit. Not, and I'm, I'm adding a little subtext there. Stumbled over like, well, I know there's Ryan Johnson's trilogy and mm -hmm. the Game of Thrones guys trilogy. No, I'm not in either. Those are going to be different. I'm I never say never. I'm paraphrasing here, but I'm done with episode after episode nine. Um, and that made a lot of people talk because, oh, what's – like maybe there are rumors out there that Ryan Johnson's trilogy could pick up after the events of Rise of Skywalker. What do you make of uh, any of this, I mean, if this anything? Is, this is kind of what I expected. I didn't think she was going to be in the next trilogy. I right. also don't think the way she stated it was like, I'm never doing another Star Wars project ever again. And she's a young actor. She has her whole career ahead yeah. of her. I mean, really, whoever would have thought that we would have hit the day where we got Carrie Fisher, Harrison Ford, and Mark Hamill back on the big screen in another Star Wars movie? Right. Things can happen. And maybe things like happen for her in the Star Wars film franchise years, if not decades from now. And when that happens, I will welcome it. But the time has come. And I wonder, I, I imagine she feels this way, especially with all the pressure that comes with taking on a project like yes. this and all the time you have to commit to it. But I am ready for something I haven't seen before. I am ready to get some closure on the Skywalker saga and move into a different sector of the galaxy yep. that we haven't tapped into yet. Because we are talking about a friggin' galaxy here. We can't keep focusing on the same characters when there's so much more to explore. I agree, because it's always been like, I got into uh, a, to a talk with one of my Patreon things where we did some uh, Q and A, and it was like, "What if Carrie Russell's character turns out to be Ray's sister?" And this is what I feel like they're doing in the new kind of Star Wars world. Mm -hmm. It's always going back to the characters that we were familiar with with the original trilogy. There was nostalgia crazy. It's like we were going to get, and to your point earlier, where like things changed. Like, we were going to get a James Mangold Boba Fett. That was announced via Variety. We were like, oh, okay, he's the one taking over. Well, that's dead, apparently. We get the Mandalorian instead. We heard maybe a Jabba the Hutt movie with or a Mos Eisley movie with Guillermo del Toro. Ooh, that sounded fun. We heard about a, you know, we got the young Han Solo movie, but it was always going back to the well. Now, the reason I'm bringing it up because of the Carrie Fisher question – or Carrie Fisher, Carrie Russell mm -hmm. question – is that every time you do that, to your point, the galaxy, it's so big, but we're focusing always on these same characters. Mm -hmm. I feel the same way if we pull another, like, has echoes of Star Wars, but, like, why do we have to always put these main characters with somebody in yeah. order to make them complete? I don't think Carrie Russell's character is in any way related to Rey or otherwise. I think she's a badass bounty hunter. That's what it looks like. It's so hard to tell you what I hope it is because I the know. idea of her being uh, Ray's, what did you say, sister? Yeah. That, I mean, that does intrigue me. I'm not going to lie. As sure. long as it's justified in the story, I don't care which direction they go in. But I think this is part of the reason why I've been so drawn to a lot of the books mm -hmm. because there's a bunch of books out there that aren't you know, completely tied or tethered to exactly what we know from the film franchise. Right, and, right. You know, even when they do work things in, like the, obviously the first thing that comes to my mind is Lost Stars. And, of course, the events of the original trilogy so weigh good. heavily on what happens to those characters. But mm -hmm. there's something different about focusing on completely different people with something familiar in the backdrop and now that we've had so many star wars films there's so many different ways to do that i mean it could be as simple as just hearing a lesson that an older character that we know of heard something like that echo throughout the galaxy i mean yeah. that's, that's the immediate light way you can have that kind of influence where it still feels true to what we know and love but you're getting a completely different journey out of it i love that yeah and i don't need every character to be related to every character in some way and that's where I feel like the retcon thing, get that out of there. But talking about just Ray being 
Ray and maybe her parents are connected some way to the bigger story that mm-hmm. JJ is telling. I don't know. I don't need Carrie Russell to be connected in that way. Although the more I talk about it, I was like, oh, it would be an echo if they were sisters. It'd be interesting. And but I got to ask you this. Did you see the the some of the thread about the clone of her? She's a clone of oh. Luke's hand. Really? Could that, would they ever do that? Oh, I remember that rumor. Yeah. I, I love this rumor. Really? I don't think it would. Yeah, I love it because it's oh, so far fetched and out there. And there was a great handle like Ray is Luke's hand or something like that on That's Twitter. That's going to take a lot of convincing to get me on board. And I'm not saying they can't yeah. do that in a full feature. But when you pitch it to me right here, sitting across from, oh, yeah. from me at a table, it's, it's a lot it's to a take lot. it. That handle, though, my God, they go in and they take screenshots from the movie of her always like the right hand is always seen and this and then Luke and this and this. it's like it's really well thought out whether it's going to be true it's very out there for a company like Disney to get behind I think I think it would be a little hard to get a lot of people I think the hardcore Star Wars sweaties who know that there has mm-hmm. been non-canon stuff I mean it's legend material that they created clones they created stuff from Luke's hand Maybe they were trying to create another Luke Skywalker and Rey was created instead. That would be an interesting spin to put if Rey was like, I thought my parents were dirty drunk junk trailers. Well, they were, but you're actually your parents is actually a hand or you were cloned or something. I mean, it's weird. I don't know how an actress or somebody would get in that mindset. I just like playing what if right now because yeah. I have Monopoly money. That's a, that sounds like a, a really, really big what if, especially because of what you just said before, which it's it seems like too much of a risk for Disney because, yeah. you know, we are talking about and you know me at this point. I'm always putting the art and the craft and the story above how much money they're going to make. Yeah. But given the state of the franchise right now and also the response to The Last Jedi, which I think is their riskiest Star Wars movie yet. Yep. I just get the feeling that I don't want to go as far to say that they're going to play it safe, but I think that J.J. is going to deliver in a similar way that he delivered in Force Awakens, which is add just enough new stuff, but also stay true to the heart of everything we've seen before. And if I'm being completely honest, as much as I did enjoy Last Jedi, if I had my choice right now, I would prefer that we wrap up the Skywalker saga that way. Yeah, I'm kind of with you, and I think it's a little too far-fetched, but... When you were talking there, it really got me excited. I kind of want to get in the meat of this and and get the chat going with this as well because you mentioned it. The Last Jedi, say what you will about it, it took some swings that I appreciate, but it did land divisively amongst fans. And they do you think Lucasfilm has sat there and went, you know what? You can't have that. You yeah. can't you can't have that with one of the the sa- I mean the sad truth is and that's coming again from somebody who puts creative and doing something different and fun and bold above all else. Right. You can't have that with a franchise that weighs that heavily on the success of the studio going forward right. with individual movies that cost as much as these costs to make just the image overall because we're not even just talking about Star Wars on the big screen. They just opened Galaxy's Edge yes. here in LA. Yeah. And if people walk away from episode 9 sad Hour in the least, you know, that is going to cut down some of the business. Could you imagine if a certain fraction of people walk away from Rise of Skywalker and they're like, oh, like, I didn't like that. Do you think a lot of those people are going to rush out or at least I'm not saying everybody. I don't want to box everybody in, but I bet you anything that at least some of those people are going to say to themselves, I am not going to run over to Galaxy's Edge with as much urgency had the magic of that movie really captured, really captivated them and made them want to be a part of Star Wars there. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's an interesting time because the more I'm going to be excited no matter what. I know you're going to be excited no matter what. But what happens if we do walk out of there going, oh. I ugh. really hope that's not the case. And I hope it's not either because. Because I did walk away from Solo like that and it didn't feel good. Yeah. It I, didn't. I mean, obviously, you guys well know I will never lie about my true feelings about one of these movies. So I was fairly harsh on that one. And I watched it a couple of times, like desperately wanting to get on that train and be on... excited about that with everybody else. And like a little piece of me, it was like hurt yeah. that I couldn't have that experience. You and I are very similar uh, in our thoughts with Solo. I did. I watched it again 
again, and it, it was the third watch, and I just could not find any. I mean, there was stuff I it's like, a, it's but it's not a bad movie. It's, it's not a bad movie. It is, it's just it's a very fairly safe. well put together movie overall. I think the performances are fine, but I mean, it's a, it's a very difficult thing to kind of put your finger on and describe. But it definitely didn't conjure the same magic as certain other things I've seen before. Yeah, I think it. I think it's the best example of how. When you keep going back to the nostalgia well, when you keep going, hey, and I always say this, it's Mm -hmm. like, you know, solo for me was a lot of, huh? Remember this? Remember when we talked about this? (laughs) Yeah. And that wasn't enough for me. So it was like... A Yoda movie? See, I'd be the same way. Oh, all of I don't that know. stuff. That's that's part of the problem with going back to the well. Is it comes with expectations that you can't get around. It's like I keep saying it about Alden Ehrenreich. I think he would have been phenomenal as a brand new character, where we could still be talking about him today. Where yeah. maybe he's changed the franchise for the better, but instead, it was a very difficult experience for me to go from Harrison Ford, who I knew and loved in the original movies, to accepting Alden Ehrenreich in that role. And it's not because he didn't give a good performance it is strictly because I have seen those movies so many times over and it's difficult to make your brain just go straight from one to another kind of performance but that's that's the thing overall and I think that's the thing that someone at least one person at Lucasfilm and Disney has to know right now I mean we're kind of touching on it a little bit with the the Ray's parents conversation it's that this franchise is so much in the limelight and it's such a big piece of pop culture that you can't get around these kinds of conversations and these kinds of conversations that build expectations. So it would behoove them to step away from it and start with a clean slate. So you don't walk in with these sky high expectations where all of a sudden you have a smaller chance to actually meet them, whereas there's a much bigger chance that it's not going to live up to what you had before. That's It's such a great point and it leads me into this next point because I think the best thing that that they can do, and I think we're getting it, Benioff and Wise going back thousands of years to tell their story. And we have all new characters, and we have the things that we love mm-hmm. about Star Wars that everybody's going to know. We have lightsabers, we have the Force, we have the t- Sith, and we have ships and galaxies and creatures and droids, and there we are. Because I think we have a fresh start, and that to me feels fresh. Mm-hmm. That feels like it's something that we know about. The casual fans can go... Knights of the Old Republic, if they're going to call it that. Yeah. Um, Knights of the Old Republic, what is that? You know, oh, Star Wars. Oh, okay. And they get the branding. Mm-hmm. Okay, they get Star Wars. But it's like, where are all these do- – like, my mother is not going to know about Knights of the Old Republic. She's yeah, going to yeah. go, another Star Wars movie, great. She's going to walk out of that thing and go, where was Luke Skywalker? Mom, that takes place 2,000 years before. Yeah. She goes, oh, okay, I liked it. Casual fan. <laughs> I think for us, the sweaties, we're going to be able to fall in love with new characters, mm-hmm. be like, oh, my God. And maybe you continue the the themes that I love, which is Star Wars echoing other storylines. Maybe there's like, you know, brothers that that like Cain and Abel that that split off and one becomes a Sith and one becomes a Jedi. You know, we meet new characters. We understand the building of the Republic and the fall of the Sith Empire, if that's mm-hmm. where they're going. There's so much we can do that doesn't have to be reliant on, huh? Here's Yoda. But it winds up serving the films that we get that took place at a later period in time. It mm-hmm. should wind up serving them well. I mean, that's the cool thing. I brought this up on Jedi Council last week because it's an idea that's stuck in my head and it's mm-hmm. something that I really appreciate is, you know, when we were in uh, Las Vegas for that amazing Comic-Con, right. I had a panel with um, Matthew Wood, who's the sound editor, and also Daniel Logan, who, of course, Boba played Fett. Boba Fett. And I had, you know, like I couldn't sit there with him and not bring up the Mandalorian, yeah. even though I know he's not a part of it so I had asked him you know how do you feel about the direction that they're taking with that series and he said that it was you know I'm paraphrasing here along the lines of even if Boba Fett isn't in the Mandalorian in the flesh Hopefully, the Mandalorian winds up telling us something about Mandalorian culture that makes us further understand why Boba Fett and Jango Fett would have taken on that that look and that yeah. creed for them. And that, that that's all I want. That's a great and, – and I read that article and I love that point is that why did Boba Fett and Jango Fett look like Mandalorians mm-hmm. if they're not an actual part of that yeah. Like That's a, a fascinating choice when you think about it. Yeah, I mean that that basically shaped their entire lives. I would love to learn. I mean, who knows? Maybe the Boba Fett movie was going to explore that a little more, which Maybe. makes me want it even more now. But I do like the fact that we could still chip away at it from 
through a completely unconnected story and still then go back and have a richer experience with a character we already know. Yeah, it, it makes me think back to that panel that we got to see lucky enough because I know they didn't release um, the footage. Yeah. I mean, it's out there, but I, you know, it's hard to watch that footage because it's like, you know, hey, you oh, see it? It's not the same. It's Don't not the do same. It. Don't do it. Don't ruin it for yourself. And it, it was so great. But the one thing I noticed was Favreau. He kept mentioning Boba Fett. There was like some footage he saw or he, he took a picture. He sent it to Filoni and he's mm-hmm. wearing Boba Fett socks. And a lot of people were talking. It's like, I bet he wanted to make The Mandalorian about Boba Fett. And I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that character in particular. I'm just shooting mm-hmm. from the hip right now. It just occurred to me. This yeah. is what I love about Rula 2. We had a James Mangold film possibly coming. Mm-hmm. That was an announcement. Josh Trank famously was going to do a Boba Fett movie. But then Fantastic Four happened and there mm-hmm. was a lot of upheaval there. What is Lucasfilm holding on to Boba Fett for? Like, why aren't we getting that Boba Fett movie? Are they waiting to see, get some of the dust to settle and yeah. then they'll go, here's the Boba Fett card? I think that's the thing that I would point a finger at more so than anything else. I mean, I'm I'm a little like my, the wheels of my head started turning when you brought up, you know, the Mandalorian and the possibility that Jon Favreau wanted to make that about Boba Fett rather yeah. than a different character. And, you know, it's not to say like we shouldn't really close the door officially on Boba Fett popping no. up in that series. For all we know, there is a little nugget hidden somewhere in there. Yeah. But. It's. I feel like maybe they were developing the Mandalorian while the Boba Fett movie was still in play, so they had to explore a different avenue. And with mm-hmm. the Boba Fett movie, I do think it has a lot to do with the response for, uh, to Last Jedi, how things shaped up box office-wise with Solo, and the yep. fact that... I mean, they have no choice. It's going to be a special franchise for the rest of our lives, for the rest of time. This is one of the biggest film franchises ever created. But they know they're standing on rocky ground right now. They don't have the same foundation that they did after The Force Awakens and Rogue One came out. And they they have to take a breath, step back, and figure out what the game plan is. Because even though Disney is a freaking empire right now, it is horrifying to me that there seems to be no toppling them between Avatar, MCU, (laughs) Star Wars. They have three of the biggest film franchises out there. That is very unnerving. I know. But they still don't want to risk anything happening to one of them, especially Star Wars. Especially Star Wars. And we don't even know. The Mandalorian, we could get multiple seasons. Wouldn't it be great if somewhere, maybe even the first season, Boba Fett returns somehow? And that's the surprise, maybe, that they were holding on to, that there is no Boba Fett movie happening is because we have Hmm. him specially slated for The Mandalorian. Or, I want this, I would love a Bounty Hunters series Yeah, that could be IG-88, Boss, Boba (laughs) Fett, the underbelly of the – like not even the Empire. It's like the scum and villainy of the universe and it's centered around Boba Fett and you bring Tamora Morrison in and he's the lead. I would love that. I I could see that happening. I wouldn't mind that either. But again, I still go back to the fact that the Disney Plus thing is part of the Disney machine. And I feel like the only – and I'm not saying that some of these characters don't have that quality. But they – if they're going to go like the dark route, they need one of them to be an anti-hero with more weight in the hero category. Right. If you know what I mean. And Boba Fett, I mean we don't know enough about him. I mean, I know there's there's offshoot comics and everything, but, I mean, really, Boba Fett shows up, looks cool, loads Han up into the back of his Slave One, and then the next movie he gets hit randomly and falls in the Sarlacc pit. There wasn't a lot there. And we have to remember that these things, again, the major money makers, they aren't just for the hardcore fans. You need a significant audience. And I'm not even just talking about audience members who have seen every single film. We're talking about people who have hit films here and there. Right. They need to be able to jump in, too. And I think that same rule applies to the Disney Plus stuff. It's not going to apply as the series obviously continue on. I think as those series progress, then you can get into certain details that you couldn't before because you have the foundation that given to you by a new group of characters and sure. a built-in audience but they got to earn that first they got to get people over to disney plus i'm sure they're going to get a ton of subscribers right out the gate especially with that rock bottom price but they got to yeah. be able to keep them absolutely and we're going to see a lot from the mandalorian as far as what it looks like what the tone mm-hmm. is how dark does it go does it does felt it felt dark to me it felt very dark i mean we talk about the underbelly of the star wars universe i mean that that scene with um uh, what's his name? Uh, Werner Herzog. Her, yeah. 
And so there was a scene that played where you see the Mandalorian kind of negotiating. You got some stormtroopers in there, and it was a little dark. It was like... So this, for me, is a great test subject as its first out-of-the-gate Star Wars series is that we're not getting an Obi-Wan series, Mm -hmm. which to me feels a little bit more safe if you're Disney for going, hey, Obi-Wan Kenobi, everybody knows him, everybody knows Ewan McGregor, he's got a lightsaber, he's a Jedi, here we go. That would have felt like more encompassing for audiences but instead, we're getting the Mandalorian. So is, that's a good sign for me, at least. Is it safe or is it more difficult? That's the yeah. thing. It's like there's no denying that familiar names come with a built-in audience because yep. people are familiar with them. Right. But then it comes with those sky-high expectations that are more of a challenge to meet. So, like, what what card do you play anymore? Yeah, it's sky-high for us Star Wars sweaties. But, again, I always go my, – my mother is the perfect filter for all this mm-hmm. because if I go the Mandalorian, she's going to go, who's that? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I what? like turning to my parents for that stuff, too. It's like – just recently my mother had mentioned seeing she wanted genuinely to see spider-man far from home and i'm like oh like maybe i should rethink my early box office predictions for that because if that's catching her eye that is usually a sign of a certain group of moviegoers that i don't normally account for when it comes to an mcu movie yep and that's that's the four quadrant we want that because Mm -hmm. studios want that disney wants that more so than any other studio out there do you think that uh, the mandalorian is a four quadrant kind of thing i I definitely do not get those vibes yeah. from what we saw at Celebration. But again, when we're talking about the launch of a major, major part of their business in Disney Plus, I would be very surprised if it goes as dark as that material made me think it will. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm kind of like of two minds right now where it would shock me from a business perspective if it was Game of Thrones dark. But that is what I felt from that footage we saw. Same here. And I'm okay with it. I mean, if it goes dark, Game of Thrones dark, then that's Disney point putting a flag in there going, we are going to do material like HBO. And that's what they should do. Yeah. I mean, really, when you think about it, because, yes, we just rattled off a whole bunch of franchises that Disney owns. They operate in so many sectors of this of the entertainment industry, and they just have so much of the box office in their pocket. But could you imagine if Disney planted a flag in, you know, I'm not going to go as far to say the horror genre, but, right. you know, more adult fare. That would just increase their viewership even more than it already is. Absolutely. I mean, we're at an age right now where we're going to want to watch The Mandalorian and we're wanting it to be some Game of Thrones darkness Mm -hmm. or or grit or whatever you want to call it. But they also have Lady and the Tramp, a movie that's happening. You know, that's for the kids. They're Mm going to have all their movies. They're going to make... There was another movie that was just announced. It's like a fairy tale kind of thing. Um, oh, with, I, they uh, announced with, the two stars of it. Yeah, Lake Le- uh, Keith. Uh, I, I want to say Lake Keith Sandfield Le- and Keith, Lana, Can- it, Lana, yes. Lana Condor. Yep, that's it. I, I don't know if I'm saying the right name. Um, <laughs> but they're they're gonna have certain series geared towards kids. So, so almost like each series will mm-hmm. hit a couple quadrants, maybe three at best, but maybe not all four, unless it's like I feel like Obi Wan. I feel like Obi-Wan would be, you know, it's right after Revenge of the Sith, so you can get a little bit of prequel flavor Mm -hmm. right before New Hope. So you're going to get that old trilogy there. You're going to get the Star Wars fans. You're going to get Ewan McGregor fans, my mother. That, to me, seems like a more all-encompassing thing for the streaming service. I will never say no to anything that has Ewan McGregor in it, especially when we're talking about Star Wars. Yeah. The one thing, I mean, everyone in the chat's going to hate me right now. So that's the, all right. I'll the kick thing them out. That, the thing that I want right now is, especially because Disney works with Pixar, I want the Wally version of a Star Wars droid story. Because, like, especially again, bringing business back into the mix, can you imagine how many toys they'll sell? Yes. Like, I have so many Wally toys. Imagine if a droid had its own story. I don't know. I just I think that would be huge and especially with the quality of storytelling we usually see, especially when you consider Wally. I mean, Wally is very kid friendly, but it's also a very adult film with certain themes that are really intense. Absolutely. If they manage to like strike the right balance there, that could be a major major win for them. Well, that's a and great something point. we've never seen before. Exactly. And I just off of the heels of Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, I'm looking at Disney. They have Pixar. They have Lucasfilm. They have Disney Animation. Why not an animated Star Wars movie in theaters? I know The Clone Wars was Mm -hmm. not well-received because it wasn't very good. But if you give 
d- d- like if you bring Spider Verse graphics into it, do something different. Yeah. The storytelling team behind that, anything, and do a movie like that, or it focus on something. It doesn't, it doesn't even have even to have be droids. It doesn't have to be animated either. I would love, but see, I I think we're I think we're at a place with Star Wars where I would love to see a huge animated Pixar movie. Otherwise. In the Star Wars universe, I don't know what that's like. I don't know what they would focus on, but I think there's room, I and think, that'd be really fun. I think fun. the executives at Disney are definitely looking at Spider-Man into the Spider Verse and thinking, you yep. know, what can we do in a similar sector? Yeah. They'd be stupid not to. Yeah, and I love. I mean, look at Wreck It Ralph, the second one. Mm. Ralph breaks the internet. You know, um, she goes in. Penelope goes in. All the Disney princesses are there, and then who walks in? C three PO walks in. He's the butler to all them. And the animation was so great. It was mm-hmm. like, oh, look at C three PO. I mean, you could do an R two D two C three PO film. I think that would either, bring some R two D two back in my life, who's been that. severely underutilized in uh, all the new movies. I would totally bring back a droid we already know yeah. for more fleshing out of them as characters, because that's, I mean, that's one of my, you know, I'm, a, I mean, you're kind of like this too. I'm a huge sucker for like cute creatures, whether yeah. they are droids or animals in any kind of movie out there, whether it's live action or animated. And the droids in Star Wars are. For the most part, I mean, if not all of them, now that I'm thinking about a list in my head, they are more than that. Yeah. They're more than that, but I think that either the show or the movies that they're in haven't really tapped into everything that they're capable of. So right. the idea of exploring them in their own film, I think, is a lot of promise. I got it. Or, okay. It's a Wally movie, but with R2. And the movie starts with an assembly of RE2 units, and then we see the head go on, and <laughs> And it's R2 when we follow him until he meets Padme Amidala on the ship in Phantom Menace. <laughs> Print some money, Disney, because I just gave you That's gold. That's also the teaser trailer. That's the teaser so trailer. So if we go the R2 route, I'm all for that. Okay. But if we want to explore something with the newer droid, mm. have you watched – you've watched that – Um. Uh. oh, crap, now the game uh, – Fallen – oh, my God. Fallen Order? Thank you, Fallen Order. Yeah. I don't know why I couldn't think of the second word. That droid is awesome. Is genius. Yeah. Can you imagine how many? I mean, I keep bringing it back to toys and stuff, but how many kids will have a backpack? What is it called again? BD, BD one, yeah, and, then, and it's yeah. supposed to be like a buddy droid. That that to me is genius. Where again, going back to the four quadrant thing, where a Star Wars fan of all ages is going to see that droid and want one. Yes, I certainly do. It's good business. I mean, you do have to play in that. That's why Hollywood is really, really tough. To, to not only fight for your art, but also make it worth monetizing. Mm-hmm. It is a thing. It's a balance that not always works. But I love that idea. I mean, I still vote for R2 because I'm an old school fan. I, I love that. The, the scene with R2 and Luke on the on the Falcon in The Last Jedi mm-hmm. gave me the chills. But R2 has been seriously underutilized in the new trilogy. He was asleep for all of Force Awakens, for God's sakes. But I think that would be fun. But you bring up a good point that I want to bring and, and bring it to the chat. Mm-hmm. Um, that Fallen Order Jedi, uh, sorry, Jedi, I <laughs> See, can't. See, now I confused you. Star Wars Jedi <laughs> Fallen, Fallen Order. Order. <laughs> My God, Do you I know. know how long, I still can't get all the Vader Immortal words in the right place. Like, what is it? Star Wars Vader Immortal Episode 1. I think that's, that's where the official title landed. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough. Which also has a great droid in it. Yeah. Um, but Fire that, right off. what, oh, that's right. Yeah. That is so right. That's great. Um, but when it comes to that footage, I want to get your take. Did you like it? Or are you going to be playing this video game? So uh, we brought this up on council, and part of the reason why I might not be playing it is because I did a very stupid thing when Battlefront 2 came out. I went and I dropped the money to buy a PlayStation okay. strictly for Battlefront 2. And then, yep. I mean, you know you know what I do? Like, I know. I, I, and, and not I'm with because, you. Not because I don't want to. I work day and night just mm-hmm. trying to absorb movie and TV content that we could talk about here, and I know we could talk about games too, but sure. my priority and my job description is movies and TV, so yep. I've just been so inundated with great material in that sector that if I'm being realistic about it, I am happy that the cutscene stuff exists online because I would totally sit back and relax and watch, watch somebody else walk me through the story. I get it. Because that's what I care about more so than anything. In the history of gaming, I have... I'm with you because movies and then TV, but it's mostly movies for me. Except I will continue playing Vader Immortal again because oh, yeah. that's something that's been assigned to me. It's really fun. But, yeah, I get behind on my gaming. I, I'm i pretty far in the Spider-Man game because there are certain yeah. games that are going to get me off of my couch to I go buy them. I have heard great them. things about that one. The Spider-Man game is 
incredible. And I'm a Spidey fan. It's like Superman and then Spidey is a close second. And so I played the hell out of that game. I'm almost done. But then I got Red Dead Redemption. Oh. I'm still riding a horse right now, and it's the first <laughs> level, and I haven't been able to go there. But for Fallen Order, I'm going to play this thing. Looks, I'm going to rope off some time because Star Wars games good. have always been my thing. They have always been my thing. And so I watch this. And for those of you who aren't familiar, hey, if you haven't seen some of the game footage, you commandeer an ad at yeah. and you blow up some MFers. And that got me. I went, I'm in an ad at. Oh my God. He's climbing up and then he uses the force. He gets in, he takes some storm and he takes it. Where saw was I when you were watching this footage? I don't know. Normally. Oh, no, yeah. You were sitting in, you were, there, there's you were no working. way. There's no way I was in the room because normally when Mark Riley watches footage and it like gets that kind of reaction, everybody can see around him. <laughs> I and I love it. I love when you get excited about stuff like that. It was really fun. So I cannot wait. So for those asking in the chat, yes, we saw the footage. It looks amazing. This is an insta buy. For me, it will be an Insta buy opening weekend whenever it comes out because I'm going to go and I'm going to have to tell Julie, I'm sorry I'm playing this <laughs> video game for a while because it's my type of thing. But let's switch gears a little bit. We're getting close. Every day we're getting close. We mentioned Daisy Ridley, mm. The Rise of Skywalker. It is the end of the saga. They're going to wrap it up. That's what they said. Our good friend Nathan Hamill, though, came on last week, and off camera we were talking. He was not dropping any scoops, and I'm like, he's like, yeah, what are we going to talk about? I'm like, I don't know. Is it is it true? Is it not true? Is it good? Th is it a good thing that the Skywalker saga is going to end with Rise of Skywalker so we can get more material, which we talked about, mm -hmm. like the different movies that we can get, maybe away from nostalgia, all new stories, Benioff and Wise, Knights of the Old Republic, going back, maybe flash forward in the future. Who knows? Is it a good thing? And Nathan just casually goes, you know they're going to do episode 10 in like 10 years. Without a doubt. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I mean, that's why I said what I did about Daisy Ridley. Because yeah. you can't. She's like, going to come back. Even if something sh seems like the most extreme prediction, never say never in this industry. Something's going to come back. They're going to take a sharp left turn. Something crazy is going to happen always. I mean, look at it. Like, we are so, I mean, this is not even Star Wars. We're we getting are, a Chris Rock Saw movie. I mean, yeah, come on. Exactly. <laughs> Anything can happen. Point. We're getting a we're getting a LeBron James Friday the Thirteenth movie. <laughs> I mean, <coughs> what? I don't know. So this is my thing. Nostalgia is huge. Mm -hmm. We just had news that dropped. We're going to talk about it on Collider Live tomorrow. Gremlins are doing a prequel yes. animated series. Give me that. I'm so for it, but they stole my idea. They stole my idea. That was my I idea. I but I said like it in the 50s. You even told that to me before, too. I wrote a, I wrote a gremlin script that I called Mogwai, which was all about Gizmo coming to America in the 50s. And Mr. Wing, the grandfather yep. um, from the original movie, is the one that finds him in that. But this is so going back to the 20s. It's animated and it's it's about their Who like, picked that one up again. Warner Brothers. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be for their streaming service. So anyways, oh, no, I need another streaming I know. Service. We're all going to need streaming services. So there's that. Neil Blomkamp, who did District 9, he's sitting there tweeting out going, yeah, the, the RoboCop, I'm making, I'm almost done with RoboCop. The movie, like everything is about nostalgia. Yeah. And so that's just prevalent in <laughs> it, everything right now. Well, it, it is about nostalgia until it won't be about nostalgia and anymore. And so we're because tired of it and we want original I think, ideas. I think it, you know, every time a movie that is expected to do big numbers at the box office comes out and then it fails, there are always a million and one factors to why that happened. Right. But I do think right now we are seeing the effects of an oversaturated market, mm -hmm. but also the fact that I think the majority of moviegoers are growing tired of repeat concepts over and over and over again yeah I, I think it's it's that's the risk that we're having we're we're knee deep in it. and i think uh you, we're gonna see because we had some nostalgia fair come out in theaters with men in black mm -hmm. didn't do very yeah. well uh what else came out i mean that, even uh, uh even the new godzilla movie godzilla i know which bums me out because i loved it so much yeah. and it just didn't do didn't do too hot uh you know child's <laughs> play i think it opened with something like 14 million which yeah. isn't the greatest start even the new annabelle movie it didn't really make all that much i know i know so toy just, story beat it we're just seeing one after the other which kind of brings me right back to star wars and the idea of get of leaving the skywalker saga behind the only way you are going to continue franchises like that and actually this is the benefit of having a cinematic universe 
universe is there yeah. are so many more corners to explore you are not beholden to one storyline you can go in any direction you want and i do think that most moviegoers out there are smart enough and hungry enough for creative content that if you don't veer in a million different directions yeah they're going to grow tired and stop coming to your movies i agree but on that note, on the rise of Skywalker, let's call it it's the end right now okay. for the Skywalker saga. There is a lot to be wrapped up. Now, this is a show that I like to celebrate Star Wars, and I just want to get excited for the rise of Skywalker now. We're going to finish the show being oh, excited about the rise me. of Sc Skywalker. <laughs> what are some things that you want either answered that you would like to see? If you – like your fan casting. You're yeah. just doing – like no speculation. I okay. mean it's like we know nothing. But there are certain things that I would love to see, and I will fan cast. I will use my Monopoly money, and I'll start. One of the things I would love to see is a flashback with Luke Skywalker and Ben Solo doing a mission mm. a la Anakin and uh, Obi-Wan. Little conjures to mind that those mm -hmm. adventures that they have and tie it to Snoke somehow. And this is before he falls to the dark side. We've seen the flashbacks. We've seen them. But I want to see that because I think it would do tremendous goodwill to the people that love Luke and were a little bit upset with how he was handled in The in uh, the Last Jedi. Yeah. I think it could be done. Will it be done? I don't know. Will Luke just show up as a force ghost? Most likely. Will it be a small part? Probably. But I would love to see something. And I would tie it this way. We see that. We see a really cool thing. We get Luke being Master Luke Jedi, Master, Master Jedi Luke Skywalker doing something crazy and Ben Solo and then it's tied together and then boom, Kylo Ren wakes up and Luke is there because the other thing I want to see is when he says, see you around, kid. I want Luke Skywalker haunting the shit out yeah. of Kylo Ren and being that conscious, being his conscious. He's there and he's like, you shouldn't be doing this, Ben. You shouldn't be doing it. And then him fighting with it because... What does Kylo Ren say in the entire movies? The light calls to him. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be the embodiment of Luke Skywalker be that light? Some of the things I would love to see, Perry, will You had here? me with most of them. Okay. Like, I do really like the idea of Rey being trained by Luke as a force ghost. But I love then that too. him taking a different approach with Kylo and it being a little more along the lines of haunting him. Sure. You lost me with the Snoke thing, though, because ever since we heard that laugh, all I keep thinking about is Sidious and how he's going to factor into all of this. And I do think that Snoke was now some sort of puppet if he was maybe directly manipulated by him or, or you know, right. he had him like driving him on the inside. And the whole throne room thing was just some sort of uh, some sort of like fake fight in order to get these people these two that he's targeted to another stage of their journey. Yeah, But I am I love like that. over and done with Snoke. And I've never really been the biggest fan of Snoke. Even when I first saw Force Awakens, I fell in love, but Snoke is always the character that I've had the biggest problem with. Yeah. But I do think that they could wind up justifying the addition of Snoke through uh, through Sidious in yeah. this movie. So I'm hoping that that happens. Yeah, I, I think it would be nice, and I don't think, and I'm kind of with you now. I think, I think even, I mean, it's like, what do people are always talking about when it comes to Star Wars lately. It's Luke Skywalker, it's Rey's parents. Snoke seems to be kind of falling away, but I see a lot of people wondering, I bring it up every show, Dark Empire, Yeah. the Emperor clones himself. Snoke, I think, could be a weird, altered, withered clone of Emperor Palpatine. I don't know. I'm not fully on board with the whole clone thing, but I do think there is some sort of, you know, magic might be the wrong term, but I guess it's kind of not. I think there's some sort of manipulation on his part in order to have created Snoke. The other thing that I'm very, very intrigued by is the situation between uh, Kylo and Hux right now because – yeah. They were kind of always kept, you know, in line to a degree, thanks to Snoke being the puppet master, so to speak. Right. And now that he's not in play anymore, it's like Hux is too. Am, am I allowed to curse on the show? Yeah, fuck Hux that. is too much of a whiny bitch to actually get in line and do something. And then Kylo is like a rage monster. Yeah. So the two of them are not leaders whatsoever. And then we have Richard E. Grant stepping in, and I don't know his specific role that he's filling. I know a lot of people keep saying that he's Hux's father, which, if you've read the Phasma book, that 
doesn't. It's not true. That right? doesn't quite line up. Yeah. But I am just curious to see who steps in to kind of fill that leadership void because otherwise the first order is going to crumble anyway without uh, the resistance even doing anything. Right, and that's such a great point too because I know everybody talks about with the rise of Skywalker, it's always around like, was Kylo you know, lying? Is it Rey's parents? Are we going to see Luke Skywalker? What's the Emperor doing? But these smaller things, what you bring up, this is character stuff that is fascinating to me. You're absolutely right that like, Kylo Ren offed his boss, and then what happened? He's laying there on the ground, and Hux is ready to off him. So what is that dynamic? Is the First Order in chaos, so to speak? That's interesting to me, and a nice little layer that mm -hmm. they could work through as a subplot. So I love that. That's a good one. And also with the position that the Resistance is in right now, realistically, they need to be in some sort of chaos, and then they need to take take advantage of that vulnerable time for them. And that right. could be a very logical way for, hey, good to win out. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's been um, confirmed that it's a year later mm -hmm. after the events of the Lost, uh, the Lost, sure, the last Jedi. So if okay, the resistance, I've always wanted this because mm -hmm. I like this idea because the resistance is basically a handful of people the last time we saw them in The Last Jedi. They're on the Millennium Falcon, that's it. So they're going to have to really operate under the radar and I would love to see first order kind of, not first order, sorry, resistant troops like hidden throughout the galaxy. They can't show themselves. So they have to hide. There's spy networks and Finns may be leading them. And I think – I don't know if it's going to you know, tie into that, but mm -hmm. there's got to be something. I love the idea of like cloak and dagger stuff within the, the Star Wars universe like where Rey's looking for force-sensitive people to rebuild the order. Mm -hmm. And on the side is also like Poe and Finn trying to find people for the cause. And what would that look like to be in a marketplace where they can't show their colors, meaning the Rebel Alliance symbol? It's so hard going from what you pitched originally, which is like, you use all my Star Wars dollars and come up with whatever I want. And yeah. in my mind, veering down a more realistic path. And yeah, well, I was actually good. thinking that we probably won't see Ray or anyone for that matter go out and recruit more force sensitive people because they are in unstable times. Oh, yeah. And it's like even when Luke had a school established, something bad still happened. So I think she'd be smart enough to know that until balance is found, you can't continue on with a new way of kind of approaching force use. Yes. So I, ha I have a feeling that she's kind of learning her last lesson from Luke as a force ghost, and then it's going to be about, you know, because, again, we were talking about this on Jedi, and it's, it's stuck in my brain now because I've always said you do not redeem Kylo Ren, not after everything he's done. It's not possible, but you can use him. You can use him as a way to find that balance. And, you know, I know people always roll their eyes at the great Jedi thing at this point because we talk about it a lot. But right. that really is where I think this franchise is heading. And I think that could be such a satisfying place to end where it kind of – it. It adds more to and also applauds everything we've seen in the franchise, the good and the bad and the value of both. And I think that could be such a fulfilling place for the series to land. I, I'm with you, too. And I, I, I went with the Rise of Skywalker title immediately. I mean, it's like I saw some of the people, oh, yeah, you know, retconning uh, Luke Skywalker's going to be alive. No. no. If they do, no. Well, it's also like we were talking about all the uh, the translations, too, and it's like, it right. was like resurrection and, and some, some uh, not, or maybe yeah, resurrection, resurrection was one, which would also tie into that Luke Skywalker theory, but that's not what I, that's not what I meant. Uh, no, and I'm or with like you. Dawn, Dawn of Skywalker was another one. But my point was, is the mantle of Skywalker could lead to instead of Jedi, it's a mm -hmm. bunch of Skywalkers, which I love that idea is because Skywalker, I mean, just take the name itself, Sky mm -hmm. and Walker, mm -hmm. Jedi, they can float, they can jump, they can levitate things. So it makes sense that maybe it is an all new kind of set of Jedi that, you know, and I don't know how they'll do it. It's one movie to do it, to dip their toes into, because again, Dark Empire, Luke Skywalker goes to the dark side in order to save Leia and Han again is part of the whole thing. And he's like, I need to go to the dark side to know exactly mm -hmm. what it is. And it's going to be hard to do in a first movie. I'm going to I'm going to classify that right now. How are you going to set that up if like this new order are all walking that line of light and dark so that we have that balance? That's a tall order. It's a very but tall I love, order. I love the idea. It's a tall order. And 
like right now, especially because of certain movies that we've seen on the big screen this year, I'm just such a big fan of these like major blockbusters also having these little relatable messages to them. Yes, it's like absolutely. I'm not going to get into it, but Spider-Man Home had a couple of things that that truly really did hit home for me and made yeah. me rethink, and it leaves you with something to walk around with. And like, what what better life lesson is there than to have balance in your life? What was I just yeah. watching where they were? Um, talking about, I think it was Cobra Kai. I was rewatching yes. season one of Cobra Kai, and there, I think there is a whole, a whole conversation in there yes. about the importance of balance in your life. That's a great point, and they did it very well. And yeah. I think that Star Wars has that opportunity there, because we don't know what we're going to get. We we could speculate all we want, and as my friend Ken Napsok and Joseph Scrimshaw say on their great show, Force Center. Speculate responsibly because you don't want to get too tired. I know, I know. Because I do too, and it's like you know, I was a little, you know, it when Snoke was taken out. I'll be qu- quite honest. I went, whoa, I loved it. Mm-hmm. But then when it settled in, I was like, ah, I wanted a little bit more. But then it, I moved on because I was speculating, like, who yeah. is this? Who is this? Is he Darth Plagueis? Is he this? Was he Boba Fett all along? Who knows? I think it's only human to speculate like that, and then to really care about some cool ideas that you came up with. There's nothing wrong with that. But if it's if it's as simple as saying like they didn't do what I wanted, so I don't like it. It's just about you know having the fun speculating, but also keeping your mind open to other possibilities. You couldn't have said it better. And uh, I love this. Stephen Lee in the uh, in the chat says, "Go to the dark side and know thy enemy." I like that, and I like that a lot too. Um, because it goes back to Luke's message to Rey when he brings up Darth Sidious and he brings up this word hubris with the Jedi. Mm -hmm. They're hubris. They didn't even know that he was there. They were so set in their ways. It's like the Jedi, you can't do this. You can't be attached. You can't do this. You have to do this. You have to do that. And it was ultimately their undoing. The Sith were right there to take him out. If the new kind of mantra, so to speak, is to Know thy enemy. Know the dark side. Mm-hmm. Don't embrace it. Know the good side. I mean, again, that's hard. That's now it's getting weird in my mind. Well, no, because I it's mean, so much fun to think about. I mean, exactly what you just said is like real life stuff. If you if you're not aware of your darker tendencies, how can you control them? Because you could walk around being fake and pretending they're not there, but eventually they're going to crack through, and you're going to be even more susceptible to them if you didn't acknowledge them to begin with. Absolutely. So, my God, that's it. That's our time. Oh my God, is that really it? That went by fast. Oh, Riley, I don't want to go to the gym. Oh, oh Perry's <laughs> got to go to the gym, and I got to go feed a puppy. So, everybody, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us here on Rula 2. It's episode 47. We're almost there. If you want to drop in some comments here, and I can mention a couple before we go out as we're doing this. Perry, thank you very much for joining me thank on this. Thank you for this. having me. Um, please, everybody, movie talk. It drops Please. every day at 3 p.m. live PST, right? Is that true? Yes, we and do. And Perry is the wonderful host that does it every day, Monday through Friday. So it please is a check that out. It really is. And I love the new format. And thank you for thank picking you. that up. And I and anytime I can go on, of course, I'll be there. That door is wide open to you anytime. Thank you. And anything else you'd like to plug, get hey, you what you're doing here? How about Collider Ladies Night? Collider just, Ladies Night, of it's course. It's on the uh, Collider Interview Channel. And it's also on Collider.com where you can listen in podcast for him too but we just had jesse buckley from wild rose on and That's she right. gives hands down one of the best performances i've seen in 2019 in that movie and then we actually pre-taped an early episode with jillian bell for one of my favorite movies of the year which is britney runs a marathon it's why i signed up for the new york city marathon this year so nice. having her in studio and also because she was so she's just like so kind and encouraging too it really meant a lot to me so i hope you guys enjoy that when it hits oh that's great so please check out not only movie talk but collider ladies night perry does such an awesome job with that. Thank you so much for joining. I'm going to go out with a question here. Bruce Crawford, because you threw a super chat at us, does Kylo Ren know that Leia is still alive? Absolutely he does. He can feel the presence of his mother. I agree. Yeah. He didn't. He knew he didn't get her. Yeah. Because he held off on that. He did not shoot her. It was his boys on the side that did. Mm-hmm. So he most likely knows she's still alive, and that's another good point. I hope that they kind of reconcile that. I can't wait to see what they do with Carrie Fisher's last run. God bless you and rest in peace. Um, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see how they're going to do that. So, um, But, yes, he absolutely does. And we'll see what they're going to do with Kylo Ren. He's going to be redeemed. I know he is. But that's okay. That's Rula 2. It's in the books. It's episode 47. Mark Fernandez will be back next week. So tweet at him, at Mark Fernandez. Tell him you missed him. But thank you, Perry, for joining us. And that's a good one in the books. See you next week on an all-new Rula 2. Bye-bye. Rise.